Howdy everyone, it's Sam. Welcome to the Wobble and Joy Sports channel. If you're new around here, hope I can get you to consider liking the content and subscribing to the channel. But if you are a regular around these here parts, thank you very much for the continuous support. The NRLW returned with a great bang last weekend. I myself got myself four correct tips out of the possible five matches. Let's get stuck straight into round number two. Round number two kicks off on Thursday night or Thursday afternoon, if you want to get technical, from 5.40 p.m. from the Gabba. The Brisbane Broncos take on the Gold Coast Titans in a Queensland derby. Uh, the Brisbane Broncos on sportsbet.com.au are $1.45 favourites, whereas the Gold Coast Titans are $2.75 outsiders. Starting with the Brisbane Broncos, first of all, they were pretty good for about 50 minutes in that game. And then the bite felt and heard around the NRLW world uh, was, was seen and felt, and that just changed the game. Uh, for the Brisbane Broncos. They remained scoreless in that second half. But credit to them, man. They completed at a high percentage rate of over uh, 70, 75% even against uh, an elite side in the Sydney Roosters. Meanwhile, the Gold Coast Titans kind of flipped, the, flipped that script. Um, they started the first half with eight complete sets out of 18, I was in attendance for that game. Uh, and yeah, man, while while they were wasteful with their opportunities, they still kept the Cowboys out of their attacking red zone. Um, and they were able to make quite a few meters uh, on the North Queensland Cowboys. Uh, for the Gold Coast Titans, though, their tackle breaks was double uh, the amount of the Brisbane Broncos uh, in that game against the Sydney Roosters. So there is a good stat that goes towards the Gold Coast Titans. Um, but overall, man, for the Brisbane Broncos to remain in the game for as long as they did, um, and, and they played a good game, albeit missed tackles and tackle breaks, do go against the Broncos in this game against the Gold Coast Titans. I think we're in for a really good game. I really do. I think this is going to be a tremendous derby. Uh, so let's go into the team list news, starting with the home side. There are a couple of changes. So Hayley Maddock retains her position in the fullback position. Uh, Ashley Werner, while she uh, was the woman in question, she is the woman in question for the bite. Uh, she is at the judiciary right now as we're speaking. Um, she has been named. I don't think she's going to get off, but I do feel sorry for her because Roosters winger Jamie Frazard put her forearm straight into her into her muzzle and fair income like, it's it's. I feel sorry for Ashley Werner. It shouldn't have been a, a situation that occurred because Frizzard came over the top when she was on the ground, when Werner was on the ground and was a tackle completed. Um, but alas, she's got to fight her case and she was sent off in that game. Um, and it's, it's fair enough when it comes to a biting allegation, isn't it? But she has been named. Lauren Dam has been named as the other, other winger because unfortunately, Julia Robinson has twinged her bloody hammy and she's had a rotten bit of luck over the past 12 months or so, man. So Lauren Dam comes in uh, for Julia Robinson. Uh, Malay Hofanga and Shanae Shizoka are the center pairing and didn't Hofanga in attack have a good game. Uh, the halves pairing, Broughton and Brickenshaw. Broughton, pretty solid, pretty solid outing. Uh, the forward pack, uh, Aneta Claudia Noasala, Destiny Brill and Chelsea Lenadazi. Destiny Brill having a very underrated game against the Roosters last weekend. Tasman Gray, Romy Teitzel and Mariah Denman, or uh, sorry, Mariah Denman. Um, and Tasman Gray, is she the most dangerous second rower in the NRLW? She has been on fire as of late. And the interchange reads Jada Ferguson, uh, Brianna Eels, Brianna Clark, and Lavinia Gould. So Brianna Clark is uh, an inclusion. She wasn't there last weekend. She's overcoming a hand injury. That's on NRL.com. Uh, uh, so that's a good inclusion for the Brisbane Broncos. Shifting over to the Gold Coast Titans, uh, Ivania Palate. Holy shit. I've never seen her uh, go in person. And go she freaking did, running for over 230, 240 uh, running meters. It 
genuinely was a pleasure to see how she goes about her business in person. She's one of my favorite players in the NRLW. Uh, going into the wingers, uh, Destiny Minnow Sinapati and Emily Bass. Emily Bass uh, was looking like that about halfway through the game against the Cowboys. And uh, she was in doubt, but she has been named. Uh, Jamie Chapman and Niall Williams Guthrie are the center pairing. And the halves pairing uh, is Shante Kiriaratu and Sienna Lafipo. Sienna Lafipo uh, was a late injection because Emily Bass uh, was put into a danger dangerous position. Um, therefore, Sienna Lafipo was activated uh, as she was 18th woman. And the reason why she's now named as halfback is because Talia Fuima Ono, who has been named on the reserves list, uh, has to overcome an ankle injury. She had to go off. Uh, people thought that she may have broken her ankle or did her Achilles, but she's okay. Um, but look, man, if there's even an inkling, like a 2% doubt uh, over Talia Fuima Ono, surely you do not play her this Thursday, even though every game counts and this is a big blockbuster game. Um, so just, you, you might have to pump the brakes. Uh, so going into the forward pack, Marto, Brown, Elliston, back row, Canfield, Bent and Georgia Hale. Interchange, Bridley Nati, Steph Hancock, Caitlin Phillips and Laker Clark. This again is going to be a great game. Uh, I just think that the Brisbane Broncos at the Gabba, I think they played a better, a, a, a more consistent game than the Gold Coast Titans did last weekend. Um, a fair bit of pressure on that halves pairing, no matter how talented they are. Um, they are the Queensland under-19s halves pairing as well, the Gold Coast Titans. Um, but I do think that the Brisbane Broncos should have too much. But if there is uh, a weakness Boy, howdy, that's uh, that left edge defensively for the Brisbane Broncos that uh, had uh, Lauren Dam, or sorry, uh, uh, Ashley Werner and Malay Hofanga on that left edge defensively. They were responsible for three or four of the tries that the Roosters scored last weekend. So that is an area of concern for the Broncos, but I am going to tip Brisbane 1 to 12. Game number two is on Saturday, and this game kicks off at 12.50 p.m. The Canberra Raiders host the Sydney Roosters from GIO Stadium in the Raiders' first ever home game on Sportsbet. The Raiders are $5.50, whereas the Sydney Roosters are $1.15 favorites. Uh, the team list news, let's get stuck into now. The entire team is unchanged after their fantastic effort against uh, the... Cronulla Sutherland Sharks on Sunday. Both the Sharks and the Canberra Raiders completed the round with 81% uh, completion rate. That's the equal highest of any of the clubs this weekend. Even better than the Sydney Roosters were the Canberra Raiders in that department. Uh, in their tackle efficiency as well, the Canberra Raiders, uh, while they did miss tackles, I think it was more so a credit to the Sharks who were just more potent in attack as well. Um, but the Canberra Raiders, man, really solid tackling unit, bro. But I think they just need a little bit more from their second rowers, even though Mona Lisa Soliola did go off with a HIA, unfortunately, and she should be available this weekend. Um, so it's an unchanged lineup uh, for the Canberra Raiders. So Zahara Tamara, Ashley Quinlan are the halves pairing as well. Maddie Bartlett, she became the all-time leading NRLW try scorer uh, for the, uh, in the NRLW while she was playing for the Raiders last Sunday in jersey number two. Um, and Grace Kemp off the bench as well, uh, a, a Brumbies W player uh, from last year or yesteryear. Uh, she had a really nice, solid debut. Uh, so we go into the Sydney Roosters now. Uh, and so we go Baxter at fullback. Didn't she make a freaking return after being out for a year, scoring a double? Uh, Bridie Parker, Jess Surgis, Isabel Kelly, Frezard Aiken, and Jocelyn Kelleher. Uh, the Ford Pack, Millie Boyle, Keely Davis, Maya Hill Moana, uh, Otessa Pule, Olivia Koenig, Shorten Burton, Kala Sapani, Hopawadi, Lexi Kirui, and Jolie Morris. Uh, uh, Lexi Kirui is uh, the is the new inclusion. So uh, it is, I believe, a Tessa Pule that's been elevated from the interchange bench. Uh, and it is uh, Kirui that has been elevated onto the interchange bench because Amber Hall sustained uh, an injury against her old club, the Brisbane Broncos, last weekend. Uh, Roosters, um, while we were all anticipating that they would 
probably that, that, that they would be the premiership favourites. Um, yeah, it, it, it's. I, I think it is fair to say they were the most impressive performance of round one. There is one other side that could um, um, fight that uh, train of thought, but um, no, the Roosters were fantastic. Uh, Jess Surges also uh, first round was uh, sensational, um, but yeah, that right edge. Uh, for the Roosters, really exploited the Brisbane Broncos. Uh, this left edge of the Canberra Raiders, it, it was it was a 28 points to 14 loss for the Canberra Raiders. And unfortunately, it was the start that hurt the Canberra Raiders. And they really, they, they started getting close, a bit too close for Sharks fans liking. Um, but it, it was a good competitive game. Maybe the most competitive, or nah, that's probably not fair. Broncos and Roosters was a pretty damn cool game. Uh, I'm going to tip the Roosters. I won't say 13 plus. I think at home, they're going to be really pumped up, these Canberra Raiders ladies. Um, and I think they'll make it a pretty uh, hard hitting affair, bro. I'm going to go to Sydney Roosters, though, unfortunately, for Raiders fans, 1 to 12. On the same day, on the Saturday at 10 past three from Wynn Stadium in Wollongong, the St. George Illawarra Dragons host the Parramatta Eels on Sportsbet. Uh, there is unfortunately no uh, no odds uh, for this game, uh, but I would tend to suggest that the Dragons would be the favourites at approximately $1.70, whereas the Eels for me would be sitting at around $2.10. Maybe that's a bit unkind uh, to the Dragons because, bro, against the Newcastle Knights last weekend, whilst they lost, the Dragons, if you didn't watch that game, they hit the ground running. They were really cool to watch. Unfortunately, they faded in between. Then they started fighting back, but fair dinkum, Tegan Berry said, come on, ladies, I'll pick you up on me friggin' back and I'll carry this friggin' team to a victory. Unfortunately, they, she fell short, but dude, Tegan Berry, man, she is such a gun of a player. Um, and while Racine McGregor is the Dallium halfback of the year from last year, uh, Tegan Berry is the superstar for this Dragons club for sure. Uh, so going into the team list news, uh, so Tegan Berry, Margot Vela, Keely Brown, Bobby Law, Cortez Tapou, Tyler Nathan Wong, and Racine McGregor, that is the back line. Uh, and it's good to see Nathan Wong. Uh, she copped a hit, but she did return in the game and ended up scoring a try as well. Uh, forward pack now, Angelina Tiakaranga Katoa, Renee Target, Roxy Murdoch, Sarah Sautia, Shania Lendl, Alexis Tawanei. And then the interchange is uh, Carla Cowan, Ella Costa, Tara McGrath West, and Madison Wetherall. Uh, for the Parramatta Eels, though, I did predict, unfortunately for them, that they would be uh, that they would lose to the West Tigers, and I wasn't expecting it to be the scoreline that it was. Uh, unfortunately for the Eels, but they again were dealt a hard blow uh, late into the piece um, before kickoff, where they lost Elsie Albert uh, and Rachel Pierce, and their big front rower and their halfback. So going into the Eels lineup now, Abby Church, Zali Faye, who's got something about her, hey, uh, Mahalia Murphy, Chantel Stowers, Casey Tohi Hiku, and P. Hiku, Berryman Duff, and Rosa Ma Ma Rosemary Beckett are in the halves. So unfortunately, Rachel Pearson has not been named in the 1-17. to 17. Uh, And then you've got Madeline Jones, Ruben Sherrington, Ruben Jean Kennard Ellis, Amelia Murphy, Talisha O'Neill and Kennedy Charrington. The interchange is Capri Payakal, Nakia Davis Walsh, Shannon Maru, and Monique Donovan. Uh, that is the one to 17. Going into the reserves, uh, unfortunately for the Parramatta Eels, uh, both Albert and Pearson have been not been named on the reserves. But yeah, if, if the Sharks and Raiders didn't complete as high as what they did, the Dragons were right up there and they stuck with the Newcastle Knights for a good chunk of the game. Uh, Newcastle, you know, they ran away 13 plus and were the clear better team in the end. But gee whiz, the Dragons did not make it easy. I, I think maybe 36-18, I think that's what the final scoreline was, or 32-16 to doesn't really indicate how close and how uh, good the Dragons were. And they, the Dragons, were one of the teams that I was really unsure of on how they'd go. But they were a fast, fast committed unit, bro. Uh, and the Parramatta Eels, yeah, they scored a couple of tries um, before half time, um, but they were never in that game against the West Tigers, unfortunately. So I'm going to tip the St. George Illawarra Dragons to win this game 13 plus. Then we go into Sunday, and there are two games on the Sunday, both 
from Belmore Sports Ground, a pure double header. The first game kicks off at midday. The Newcastle Knights take on the North Queensland Cowboys, and Sportsbet have the Knights at $1.18. The Cowboys are sitting at $5. The Newcastle Knights, as I said before, they had to really fight for that game for ascendancy against the Dragons last weekend. And once they did, man, they were really potent. And look, I've got to be really, really honest, right? Caitlin Moran was the 5 8 uh, for the Newcastle Knights last weekend. And I know that she is a talented human being. But when she released that post last year, any sort of goodwill that she had built up had been instantly deleted from my mind. And I forgot how good of a player that she was. And the things that she did against the Dragons this past weekend reminded me. And also, like, because that post was a year or so ago now, I forgot about it to a degree. Um, but yeah, Caitlin Moran, ooh, yeah, I, I shouldn't have... I said last week that the Newcastle Knights were a side that have been depleted, but Caitlin Moran, bro, holy shit. She is she is a pretty talented uh, rugby league player. Uh, and then the North Queensland Cowboys uh, last week, losing 16 points to six after leading at halftime, six points to four. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's the first game of 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 the of the North Queensland Cowboys and it was away uh, in in a stadium that I reckon a quarter of that team had never played in a stadium like that before I think uh, so yeah it was it was to a de- it was to a degree disappointing but then the Titans uh, they they played against the Cowboys. Um, and the Cowboys were down a woman in my Middleton uh, for 10 minutes. There, there was a sin binning for the Cowboys and the Cowboys were resilient. And I just think that maybe the first half, the Gold Coast Titans did not execute properly. And if they did, maybe it sort of papered over the cracks a little bit defensively for the North Queensland Cowboys, who did miss uh, 49 tackles uh, in that game, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, there's a bit to work on, but still the, the, the talent in that team, I truly do believe in, uh, that, that team on paper is way too talented to, to cop a wooden spoon or something like that in 2023. Uh, and two women that I want to make mention of, uh, Brie Chester in the Jersey number 12 in the second row, her debut was pretty strong, but Brie Chester, a really nice, solid debut. And Crystal Blackwell, who came in to play uh, with Jersey 14 on her back um, in the 5 8th position, dude, she is from my region down in the Goulburn, Canberra area. Um, first time I've ever seen her play. Uh, dude, she's got some class about her. Really, dude, uh, a, a, a grubber kick she nearly picked up for herself uh, in nearly scoring a try on debut. A couple of passes that if they connected, China Pilata and Jasmine Peters are away. Um, so a really nice um, offensive game from Crystal Blackwell. She is super, super young and raw. So she did miss 10 tackles in that game, unfortunately. But yeah, just just execution um, in that game is what really kicked us in the backside too. Um, the, the the kicks from Kiri Dib, unfortunately, only went about 10 metres straight and about 25 metres to the right or left. So polish needs to, there's a lot of polish needs to be applied to the North Queensland Cowboys. But again, I still believe in this team, bro. It's such a good team on paper. Uh, and I believe in the coach, Ben Jeffries, for sure. Uh, so going into Newcastle Knights, uh, Tamika Upton in the fullback position, Sheridan Gallagher and Jasmine Strange are the wingers. And Jasmine Strange reminded me how good of a player she is. She is. Uh, Shanice Parker, Abigail Roach are the centers. And Caitlin Moran, Jesse Southwell are the halves pairing. Uh, the forward pack, Predabon, Higgins, and Butler. Did you see what happened to Rima Butler in the space of 60 seconds in that first half? That poor freaking woman. Also, Taylor Predabon, her one of her fingers was pointing directly freaking north, but she's been named. Uh, there was a rumor that she could, uh, she might have missed this game, but she is going to play in this game. Uh, the back row, Caitlin Johnston, Clydesdale, and Kayla Romaniuk. And the interchanges, Nita Maynard, Tiana Davison, Simone Capane, and Vienna Tenal. Moving into the North Queensland Cowboys, uh, Fran Goldthorpe is 
the fullback, China Pilata, Jasmine Pe Peters, Shelley Long, Autumn, Rain, Stevens, Daly, Kiwi International, uh, uh, dual, dual International, I should say, uh, one of the wingers. Uh, so that is fantastic stuff uh, to see her named. Uh, so my Middleton as well for uh, upending Emily Bass uh, is suspended for two games, unfortunately. Uh, the halves pairing, again, Crystal Blackwell is there and Kira Dib is the halfback. So Tallulah Tillett has again succumbed to the hand injury, but she has been named on the reserves in jersey number 24. Uh, going into the forward pack, Talisha Harden, Mantleman, and Tiana Rafstrand Smith, Power, Chester, and Wheel. I thought the back row was the best element of the Cowboys game in round one. And then the interchanges, Karoy, Muka, and she was solid. Uh, and Jataya Faifua and SA Banu. So hopefully SA Banu does get her NRLW debut this weekend. Cowboys 13 plus. And the final game of round number two is again from Belmore Sports Ground, a part of the double header. And kickoff is at 1.50 p.m. The West Tigers host the Sharks. The Sharks are $1.50 favorites. The Tigers are $2.60. The Tigers, they were really entertaining. Uh, and gee whiz, Batilla Velti Walsh did not miss a beat after returning uh, the fair income style. Uh, in her first game upon returning from an ACL injury late, she had, what, three or four try assists in one try herself? She freaking killed it in her return game to the NRLW. So she's been still named at fullback uh, for the West Tigers. Um, but again, I, I'll just complete what I was about to say before. Against the Param Parramatta Eels, I know the Tigers won convincingly in the end, but the Parramatta Eels were pretty poor defensively, unfortunately. Um, so maybe the Tigers win by that margin, maybe a bit of a fairy tale sort of stuff. And they do meet a completely different opposition in the Sharks this weekend, don't they? Uh, a, a level a higher or two than the Parramatta Eels are for sure. Uh, so the rest of the back line, Whitfield, Horn, Tafuga, uh, Lenaz, Pauline Pelé, Razabele, and Emily Curtin are the halves pairing. Uh, Togatuki. Ebony Pryor in the hooker position and Christian Pio, Kezi Apps, uh, Salata and George round out the back row uh, and Sophie Curtin, Lutu, Osborne and Vaki uh, round out the interchange. And then we go into the Cronulla Sharks, Taylor, Biddle, Penatani, Takarangi, Andy Robinson, Tonagato and Taylor Priston. Uh, Tonagato, first game in the 5-8th position in the halves. And again, she can just, she could fair dink and just become a friggin' rocket scientist and she'd absolutely nail it uh, in a week. She's just one of them gifted athletes, bro. Uh, and then the Ford pack uh, reads Johnston, Dodd, Butler, Holmes, Foliaki, and Anderson, Seriana, Nato, Katoka, Tegan Dimmick, Chloe Saunders, and Jasmine Tupo Witchman. And Maddie Studden has been named on the reserves list as well. Uh, yet, if it's not Broncos Titans, this is the game of the round, in my opinion. We're really going to see uh, what the Tigers uh, are capable of against a side that, in my opinion, are a couple of levels above the Parramatta Eels uh, in 2023. But they're undeniable. Uh, they're undeniable are the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks, in my opinion. They, they in, Just in round one, against a really committed Cambria Raiders outfit, they proved that they are going to be a finals contender this season. Uh, and the West Tigers, we just need now need to see them uh, take on a high-class high, high, class, um, high class team. And these two sides did meet in the trial game uh, a few weeks back. And the Sharks did win convincingly a big 13-plus or even 20-plus scoreline against the Tigers. So I think the Cronulla Sharks will account for the West Tigers and... I think they'll win 1-12. to 12. I think this could be a really entertaining game of footy. Yo, that's it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching uh, the NRLW Ace High Tips show. Uh, thank you so much for the support. I hope your team wins this weekend, except for the Newcastle Knights. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Take care. Adios.